Hi everyone and welcome to sewing pattern tutorial. So this is the all the top which you've all been waiting for me to bring out and here it is. So today's video is how to sew the all the top. I've made this one in a lovely gingham and it's just a perfect little top. So before we get into the tutorial, obviously the pattern files will be in the box below for you to download and then you can follow along with the tutorial. There's also written instructions too if you want to use them. It's a great little top, it comes in sizes 6 to 28, raglan sleeves, boxy style top with gorgeous gathered cuff sleeves and on the back really simple really simple button closing with a little loop and obviously your button of choice the next got a facing and yeah really simple lovely make and you won't stop at one i can guarantee you'll you'll make more than one and it's suitable for lightweight to medium woven fabrics you use chambray lightweight denim obviously cotton seersucker gingham linen anything like that experiment and have fun so without further ado let's head on over to the cutting table and i'll show you how to make the all top So yeah, so the all the top's really simple make. All you need is your front, which is cut on the fold, your two back pieces, your two sleeves, your two cuffs, and your neck facings. That's all it takes, really simple make. So once you've got all your pattern pieces cut out and obviously your chosen fabrics, you obviously are gonna get ready to sew. So for the facings, I've added a notch on the center back so you know which is the you know, the centre back of your facing because they are quite similar in shape. So first things first, we are going to stay stitch along the neckline. So the neckline of the front, the back and the top of the sleeves because it's a raglan style top, part of the sleeve is obviously in the neck area. So at the top of the sleeve. So we're just going to stay stitch, which is just within the seam allowance and it just prevents anything going out of shape while you're you know putting your garment together so there you go you can see the stay stitching it's within the seam allowance and i set my machine to 1.5 so it's a little bit tighter stitch next i'm just going to cut out my facings with some interfacing iron on interfacing and iron it on to the facings and as I said, the front facing is cut on the fold, so obviously you know that's the front, but for the back piece, it, as it's very similar you know, shape, both sides, there is a notch, and the notch is the centre back part of the facing. There's a notch, I'm just pointing them out so you know that's the centre back for both pieces. And then just iron your interfacing in place. So I'm just adding my notches there, just so I know where they are. And then we're just going to overlock all of our facing pieces and also overlock all of our blouse pieces. The only pieces I am not going to overlock are the hem edges of the sleeves and the bodice pieces, but I'm overlocking all other edges or all of the raw edges. Okay, so we're now going to add our facings together and as I've showed you before, you want to make sure that the notched edge, which I'm putting a pin in there, that is the edge that you do not sew. So once we've pinned in place, we're just going to sew along those two seams there, press the seams open. to 
going to put the face into one side for the moment and next we're going to work on our button loop. So I've just took a square of fabric, approximately 12 centimetres square, and I'm just folding it over on a diagonal so it's like the bias and I'm just putting right sides together. Now my fabric obviously is the same on both sides but you would put right sides together and I'm just going to use the edge of my foot and I'm just going to sew right along that folded edge, right the way along. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess and I'm just going to get my loop turner and turn my button loop through to the right side. So just pull it through and then you should have a nice length of button loop, more than what you need but at least you've got plenty to play with and then we're just going to trim off what we don't need and then obviously you've got to choose your button. I have got a wooden button and my button is between one and a half and two centimetres in diameter so that's the button I've chosen and you can see there's plenty of loop to play with and you just need to determine how much of the loop you're going to actually sew and the rest will be trimmed off so we're going to put the button loop to one side now and we're going to sew our sleeves to the front so you're going to get the right side this is obviously fabrics right sides together you're going to find the right the front notch of your sleeve and pin it to the front of your sleeve edges of the bodice so make sure you're using the right notches so you've got one notch for the front so one notches should meet with the one notch on the bodice front pin in place and then we're going to sew and then we're going to press our seams open and then we're going to do the same with the back we're then going to pin the sleeve the remaining part of the raglan sleeve on to the back pieces there again so just double check that you've got your two notches for the back which will correspond with the two notches of the sleeve with your right sides together obviously and then you pin in place and sew and then we're going to press those seams open too. Okay, so once we've done all that and it's all pressed, we are then going to sew up our sleeves and our side seams. So I'm just going to match up the side seams, match up the underarm seam there and just pin all the way around and then obviously do that for both sides. Sew, press your seams again, ready for the next stage. Okay, so now our garment is all sewn together we are now going to add two rows of gathering stitch on the bottom edge of our sleeves set your stitch length to the longest stitch and do two rows and obviously if you've got a cat move your cat out of the way and then once we've done that we're going to prepare our cuffs again with right sides together matching up the short edges of the cuff pin and sew overlock and press and then once we've done that we're going to fold our cuffs lengthways with wrong sides together now so just wrong sides together match up your notches you should have a notch for the center of your cuff and then obviously you've got your seams and if you haven't put your notches in like I didn't on that one there you just you know add your notch there so you can then know where the center of your cuff is for when you add it to the sleeve you obviously you want to keep your sleeve gathered evenly so having your notch in place will make sure that the gathering is equal on both sides of your sleeve so once you've determined your notches then you're going to pull your gathering threads and you just pull the gathering threads until the sleeve will fit inside the cuff and then with right sides together, matching up your raw edges and matching up your seam of your cuff with your seam of your sleeve, you're going to slide the cuff all onto the sleeve, pin in place, adjust your gathers, make sure they're all equal. You've got your notches, so you match up your notches as well. 
and then you're when you're happy with your gathering and you've got it all evenly spread out then you're going to obviously repeat for the second sleeve and then stitch in place and then overlock your seams and then give both of your sleeves a press. And then if you've got any visible gathering threads, just pull them out like I'm doing here. So next up, we're going to add our facing, but before we add the facing, we need to add our button loop. So I'm just marking a centimetre, the seam, the seam allowance line, if you know what I mean, uh, going down the back and across the neckline, just a little bit, so I know where the facing's going to sit, because obviously your button loop does not want to sit in the way of where your facing is going to be. So I just mark that line, and I know I need to place my loop below, below that line, and you place your button loop with a loop facing inwards and the tail ends of the loop facing outwards and obviously depending on the size of your button you just need to leave enough loop for the button to go through once you're happy just pin the first like leg of the loop in place first just below that line that that line that you've got marked and then you can then just fold the remainder of the loop underneath just like that and pin it in place just double check you've got enough loop space because obviously you're going to have a seam allowance obviously a centimeter of that is going to be your seam allowance so make sure you add enough loop and then you're just going to stitch that in place within the seam allowance just just quickly stitch it in place and now we're ready to add our facing i'm just going to pin our facing in place matching up the center front notch of the facing with the center front notch of the all top and then just pin all the way around pin 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 and then once you're happy and it's all pinned neatly in place we're going to then stitch the facing we're going to start at the bottom of one side go to the corner pivot go all the way around the neckline go to the corner pivot down to the remaining part of the facing Then once you've done that, you're going to clip your curves. Just clip where, all the way around, clip your curves. And then we're just going to understitch and just trim the corners there, reduce the bulk. And then we're going to understitch on the facing. So the seam allowance should be under the facing. So as you're doing your understitching, just double check as you go along that the seam allowance is where it should be under the facing and just saw a few millimeters away from the edge there and what this does is make sure that the facing sits nice and neatly on the inside so once you're happy with your button loop you can then trim off the tail ends there turn your facing through and just poke out your corner so they're nice and neat and then we're going to give it all a nice press
And then once we've done that, we are going to pin the back pieces together. So there's a notch just below where the facing ends. I'm just gonna pin all of the way down with right sides together, obviously, all the way down to the bottom edge. And we're gonna sew in place and then press that seam open. So once we're given the neck a lovely press and everything's all nice and neat, we're just going to finish off the back neckline there with a nice row of top stitching and that just finishes it all off lovely. And then we're going to overlock the bottom of the all the top. Once we've done that, we're just going to press under two centimetres. So just press under your two centimetres and then we're just going to stitch the hem in place. And all that's left to do once we've done that is sew on our button. And just give everything a nice press and there you go, you've made your all atop. How simple was that to make? Obviously no complicated fastenings, just a simple button loop and a button and your neck facing. I just love it. It's, I think it's just a really cute style top and one that you definitely need in your wardrobe. It's great for layering on its own. So thanks again and I shall see you on the next sewing video. Until then, bye for now.